this is what Marco Allegro's his research was pointing to. He was trying to say that what was really going on was these people were trying to hide a lot of what the psychedelic rituals are from the Romans and from the people that captured them. So they hid them in stories and parables, and then there was all sorts of problems in the translations. It's just like, you know, you're taking things from ancient Hebrew and you're breaking it down to Latin and you're breaking it down to German and English. And I can't, I can't believe he got a positive reception for this. If you're taking well, he didn't, on... didn't necessarily. He, uh, the book got bought out okay. by the Catholic Church and then recently reinstated. And then what do you mean bought out? It, they bought it. They like, they, I think they took it off the market. I think you used to be able to only get a uh, copy of it. You used to only be able to get a um, like a, a used copy. Okay. And then Jan Irvin put it out. He republished it like a few, I don't know, I want to say maybe eight, ten years ago. So now you can get a hold. But he also published another book after they took that one back. But I think, I, I don't know the, the total history of it, but he published a second book. And the, the second book was the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Christian Myth. And the first one was the Sacred Mushroom and the Cross. Wow. So, but it only makes sense. If you think about people who lived back then, and we know that psychedelic mushrooms aren't recent. They right, existed forever. Yes. Right? So if these people found them, and they most certainly did. Yes. There's a lot of depictions of them. And there's also a lot of iconography, and a lot of, um, like, like you, you see shapes that resemble mushrooms like all over the place in some of the 